Okay, so um, hey guys, um, my name is Heidi and I'm so excited to have one of our PPHQ members, Sarah here, and she's gonna talk about her success with in-person parties. So welcome, Sarah, thanks for being here. Hey Heidi, thank you so much for having me on this afternoon. And I love your accent. Thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm not American, as you probably can tell. I'm Australian and um, I've been living in the US for about seven years now. That's awesome. Well, I'm so happy to have you because you have been having some success and um, anywhere from three to four people at an in-home party all the way up to, it sounds like 32. Um, and yes. can you talk to us a little bit about your in-person parties and, um, and let us know, oh, and let us know what's your business name. Go ahead and share that with us. <laughs> It's called Paint and Create with Sarah, and you'll find me on Facebook. Um, I have a business page there, so that's the name of my business. And I do art and craft parties in people's homes and public venues. That's awesome. So if you're in the North Carolina area, make sure you check her out. And then also, yeah. um, let's go ahead and talk about some of these parties. So how did you get started with paint parties, just doing your in-person paint parties? Okay, so when I arrived in the US seven years ago and about four years ago, I wanted a part-time job. So I applied to be an art instructor at a local art studio. And I ended up working there for about three and a half years. And by the time I left, I was the store manager uh, or studio manager as well as a paint instructor. So I probably did about 400 paint parties over three and a half years. Yes. Wow, that's a lot of paint parties. It is. And we specialized in um, wooden door hangers. So that's what we were doing back then. And then COVID happened and I thought it was about time for me to go out on my own. And uh, that was a hard decision because my boss, we were very good friends and we are still to this day. We both support each other, which is fantastic. And I decided to start my own business doing paint parties, mobile paint parties in May of last year. Okay, so how's that been going? So you're doing, are you doing smaller parties because of, of COVID and stuff like that? Or how is that working out? Okay, so um, it was probably around about July of last year that I felt comfortable in reaching out to some people and say, hey, would you like to have an in-home paint party? And I found at that time that people were ready to get together in small groups in their homes because they wanted to do something creative. And in my state, we were allowed to do that. So my first paint party in July, and that was eight people. And after that... It was a bit of a summer break. And then come September, I decided, well, hey, I need to get this show on the road, get some bookings. And on the 23rd of September of last year, I said to myself, I want to get 10 paint parties booked in my planner from, um, by the 1st of October. So I sent myself a mission. And what I did was I used your script and got onto Facebook and started sending out messages to businesses. Mm -hmm. So it was messages to local vineyards. I did, I did my local brewery and tap house. I also reached out to a country club. And from that, you know, some people didn't respond, which is okay, because that will happen. Um, but I got some yeses. So from that, I booked my uh, winery, which was my first sellout at 32 people. Uh, that was your famous truck and tree, Heidi. Yay! Yes, the <laughs> truck and love, tree. People love that truck and tree. It has been making us money for years. It's awesome. Right. Right. And yeah, that was fantastic. Uh, I reached out to the country club. They got back to me. And also um, just five minutes down the road, I have our local brewery, which, um, you know, has a bar and it's very family friendly, a lot of activities and markets. And I've actually done, I'll be doing my third event with them next month. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Okay. So for those of you listening, some areas are okay to meet, you know, it just depends yes. on where you're at. So, and also your comfort level. So Sarah has definitely, um, I mean, you set yourself a pretty, pretty big goal to accomplish in right. a month. I mean, you gave yourself one month to get 10 bookings. Is that right? No, I am um, on the 23rd of September. I said, I want to have 10 bookings in my diary by the 1st of October. So I gave myself seven days. So <laughs> you did it right. I actually got seven dates 
booked by the 1st of October. And by mid-October, I actually had all 10. Oh my so, gosh. And that was just by using the script, sending yes. it out like five times a day. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. did that. And, and follow up as well. Um, because people, businesses are, you know, people are busy, you know, have a lot to do. We're just one person, you know, contacting them uh, during that day. And, you know, a couple of them didn't work out and that was okay. You know, I just say next. And it's a numbers game, like you say. You know, you have to keep at it because not everyone will say yes. Oh, my gosh. I love this because it's so true. You have to just keep trying because that's the thing. And also remember, like, just like we're busy and somebody might send us a message and they're like, oh, we'll get to it later. Oh, we'll get to it later. You know, the same thing. If you hadn't heard something, you know, in three or four days, send it at a different time. Maybe you send it to right. their lunch rush and they couldn't get to it. So that's wonderful. Okay. So what would you tell um, all of, you know, the, the people listening that are like, Oh yeah, that's easy for Sarah. She taught 400 paint parties before, but you right. know, but now you're stepping out on your own. I mean, it's right. still gotta be scary, right? It is. And I had to start from scratch. So I was part of building somebody else's business for, for a while. We were doing that together, but it wasn't my own business. And when I stepped away, I did have to start from scratch and find my own customers. So, and it is scary because now it was mine. I'm not working for somebody else. I have to make this happen, you know, on my own. And I still get nervous when I do Facebook Lives. Um, the jitters don't go away. And when I did that first public party, Heidi, for the 32 that was sold out, oh my gosh, I was a nervous wreck for like the two days leading up to it, it was, it was bad. And I'm praying on the way they're driving, you know, bless the people, bless us, bless me, you know, and make it go smoothly. And it did. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a good thing that the fear doesn't go away because it keeps you on your toes. Yeah. Um, yeah. You may get a little bit more comfortable with it, mm -hmm. um, but it is still there. And I do understand, you know, I did have a lot of experience um, and of course that helped. But that doesn't mean you can't do it if you don't have experience because we've all got to start from somewhere. And to be honest, I was starting to get a little bit impatient with my growth because I had come from somewhere that was growing and was quite big. And I did message you and you did answer me back early on. And I said, hey, I'm only at 200 likes, but, you know, my business is six weeks old. <laughs> <laughs> and and you're very sweet and very encouraging but um i i've learned not to be impatient and just to embrace where i am because it's going to take time to grow oh my gosh yes embrace where you're at that is so true because i think no matter what level of success like success you're at you're always looking at what somebody else is doing and we can get into right. that comparison game and just like you you know with a good friend of yours it, you know is still and hopefully successfully running that business. Yes. yes. Good. You know, and y'all can still be friends. And then, you know, you're you're kind of building this, but of course you're gonna have those nerves. And and I right. like that you you have to embrace where you're at because again, you know, there's really not a um, you know, I've had some big goals in my in my life and I've I've reached some really big goals in my life. And I really thought it was like when I hit the goal, this will happen. You know, and it, it's right. like that. Like there's not a parade, like nobody's no. cheering in the, the crowds for you. Like, it's not like that. So it's gotta be this internal drive. And, and it I does. Think that, that just has to, to drive you. So um, any, any tips you wanna give them before we go? Like maybe a last tip on, you know, I know if they're scared, they need to just take action, but um, right. these in-person parties, of course, send messages. It's a numbers game. But any um, last thing you can think of that they need to hear? Um, I would say once you have the party booked, um, you know, make sure when you are there that you uh, got that energy up 30% like you do for Facebook Live because you want to make a good first impression. So my goal is with the venues that I booked that first time round is for, for them to invite me back. Um, yes. because I want to, you know, build a relationship with them. Um, one other thing I found is with your door prizes, make sure you bring them um, and be generous with them. Like, don't be 
stingy is do Americans understand that word stingy yeah, like <laughs> yeah like be generous I will do like with 30 people at a paint party I will do you know five six door prizes you know and you can pick up nice things at the dollar general you know some cute little things it doesn't have to cost you a lot but um just make sure you're really on your on point and on your game and um enjoy yourself and make it fun because uh, the goal is for them to invite you back, of course. Yes. And that's the that's the beauty of that is once you establish that relationship with a vineyard or whatever, they're going to keep coming back to you. It's not like they're trying to find a new paint party host to come to them. Right. Yeah. Yep, definitely. And one of my venues said to me, oh, we like it when you come, Sarah, on our slowest night because we've had the best Wednesday night we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. I know. I'm like, you don't have to have your paint party business on Friday and Saturdays. Like my big nights yeah. are Mondays and Tuesdays and stuff yes. like that. So yeah. that's awesome. And, you know, um, I have never like I know I always tell you on a Facebook live to up your energy 30 percent. But it's so true in person. You want to make a good impression and when they come in you want to greet them and show them love and pray on your way to your paint parties yes and making sure that it's it's about serving them and i i've got right. to sarah with my with my nerves i'll um i'll say you know okay wait how can i help them and when we take the focus off of us and put it on them it changes everything so for sure oh yes. my gosh i'm so glad you were here and i'm so happy for your success Thank you, Heidi. And I, I love the group. I love being a part of it. And um, just so many people um, within uh, Paint Party headquarters, there's just support everywhere. So yeah. I love it. It's Keep a, doing it's what you're doing, group. Heidi. <laughs> oh, thank you. And okay, so if y'all want to learn more about Sarah, um, Sarah, tell them where they can find you. Okay, you find me on Facebook at Paint and Create with Sarah and uh, come by and say hello. And um, yeah, I'd like to see you. Yes, and if you're close to her area, book a party with her too. So, all right guys, um, let us know in the comments. And um, I really, my biggest takeaway was like setting that seven day goal and then just attacking it. She didn't like extend it out forever. So maybe um, put in the comments what your takeaway is so we can see um, what Sarah taught you today. All right, y'all have a great day and we'll see you next time. Bye guys.